Hello everybody, Dan Manachek here, and I've mentioned that I was <coughs> processing some clay that I dug up, and I wanted to show you how I'm doing it. Now, I'm, I'm not an expert by any means, this is the first time I've done this, um, but I used a bit of common sense, and but with a lot of help from uh, uh, the YouTube videos uh, that, I, that I watched. Simon Leach has uh, one about re -clay, or, uh, processing dug up clay. And when he talked about it, I thought it was a really good idea. And I, I actually already had clay that I dug up <coughs> a while ago. And the first thing I did was to dry it out. I knew you had to dry it out. I turned it through a, a screen, half-inch screen on a, on a just a wood frame. I put it over a wheelbarrow. And you put it. It's stapled on. You put it this way so that it doesn't fall off. Uh, the staples don't get pulled out into a wheelbarrow and just shoveled it in and, and raked it back and forth and um, I have I filled up uh, beer cases, empty beer cases and I have like, I don't know, 12, maybe 15 beer cases full and when I got to the end I had all of the leftover stone, I thought it was stone and they were all golf ball sized pieces or, or a little smaller and I was looking at it, curiosity, looking at it and it was actually it wasn't rock at all, it was just hard pieces of clay that wouldn't break up with a shovel so I put those in buckets, I had um, one, two, four buckets of that stuff. And uh, the rest was all neatly packed away. And I wanted to process this stuff first because it's the worst of the bunch. And I figured, you know, if I can, if I can get this uh, into a usable clay, uh, then I'll be doing pretty good. And I first thing I did was I tested a sample. But I took some of the clay, picked out the stones, mixed it with enough water to make it into a workable clay, and made a little bowl out of it. And <clears throat> at the time, I had no... Uh, uh, cones to tell how hot it was, it was in my test kiln, but I put in um, some copper, pieces, small pieces of copper in, in the dried pot in, in the test kiln, and fired it up uh, well beyond the melting point, and uh, so it's at least uh, like cone uh, uh, 3.5, give or take, you know, uh, maybe higher, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to test it further to see what uh, temperature it actually matures at. Uh, but it's a real, it was real nice to work with. It's very pliable. I bent it over my finger and it, it's, uh, uh, you know, did not break at all. It wrapped around real nice. So um, I think it's going to be good clay. And it's, it's a real, real nice color. And, and uh, after I came out of the kiln, it was real nice too. And very strong. It's got a bit of sand in it uh, and some rocks. And the first thing I did after I, I uh, had it in the buckets is I added water. I had about a four five pound bucket with about four pound, uh, gallon, or I'm sorry, five gallon bucket with about four gallons of the uh, clay in it. And I added water to cover it to um, maybe like three inches over top of the clay. So the bucket was full to maybe three inches, two or three inches from the top. And then I soaked the first one for a couple of weeks, but I really don't think it was necessary because the um, next one I did, the one I'm working now, I soaked it for a day. And there was no difference as far as the workability. Uh, I know later it's better to age the clay, but at this point I think that the idea is just to get the stuff out. And I collect vintage and antique collectible kitchenware, utensils, small appliances. My wife and I uh, collect things like that. She does the glassware, which uh, actually I'll do another video on that because it turned out to be very useful for the pottery. But I had one of these, and I don't know if you've ever seen these for straining tomatoes or apples or whatever, and uh, I paid 50 cents for it. And um, it's, it's not that old, it's maybe from the uh, uh, late 50s, uh, early 60s, because it has a plastic handle uh, instead of the Bakelite. So I started, I thought that would be a great idea to use this, so I, I tried it. Every stone that got caught would bind it up, so I thought, well, I'll go backwards with it and the screw and the spring come off if you go backwards. So, but what I found was it actually works really well. It hangs on the bucket real nice. And because it's kind of cone-shaped at the bottom, all the stones go to the outside. And all I did was I used a uh, uh, stick, which I probably lost down in there somewhere. But I used a stick and just uh, stirred it. And it took maybe five minutes to do the whole bucket. And at this point, it's like um, as thick as, like, uh, I would say as thick as like commercial uh, slip, clay slip. But uh, I was curious what I'd get out of it, and 
stones, some larger gravel or small, uh, like large sand, I guess you'd call it, and um, looks like a piece of coal and roots. <laughs> so, uh, and I think there was a uh, a nut in there somewhere too. But uh, that's what I got out of it from that from that whole bucket. So it wasn't too bad. Then I got my sieve, and it's a um, a number 60 sieve. And these things are like they're like 25, 28 bucks. And I was trying to be I'm trying to be as gentle with it as I can. So uh, what I found worked well was uh, if I could find it, it's down in here. There it is. I don't want to use anything too harsh in the bottom. So uh, some people use a piece of plastic or whatever. I got a rubber squeegee like for auto body uh, body uh, auto body work, and I'm barely touching the screen and going back and forth. And I would say it's going to take about maybe 15 or 20 minutes to do this to do this button. The next day I came down the one I did, and all the clay sunk to the bottom, and I laid it off about uh, maybe a quart. Or so, maybe more, maybe even half a gallon of water off the top of clear water. And uh, I got these ladles, and I wanted to show you these. These are very useful too if you come across these large ladles. Again, at an estate sale, uh, they're they're vintage, <laughs> uh, but they work really well, especially for like stirring up. And I always want to start every time I do this. I start with the the grittiest stuff first, the most stones in the beginning, because then you have the liquidy stuff help wash the clay away and then you can dump it. But this stuff that I processed right now is like thick, thicker than gray, very thick. And that's just from bit overnight ladling off. So what I did then, I tried to find the best way of getting the water out. I found on uh, Clay Art uh, as a, um, one of their archives on, on the internet and uh, there's a lot of useful information and I found about uh, I was looking originally about plaster bats because I'm curious about using plaster bats, but if anyone has any ideas on that, let me know if you've ever used one before for, for uh, on the wheel. But my bats for drying aren't ready yet, so they mentioned putting it in canvas. That they said the native Indians put the um, put it in on sheets of canvas or just linen, cotton on the ground because they have a real sandy soil and the water. Um, uh, is drawn to the to the sand through capillary action, like right through the cloth. And then it's actually faster if you do it on the ground. So what I did was I took a bucket, and I had a bucket that actually already had a hole in it, and I took a piece of screen. I used a that's actually a speaker grill. Put that in the bottom of the bucket. Put a piece of canvas on top of it, and I put about three inches of sand down in there. Then I put my canvas duffel bag down in, and because I don't want to have it you know hanging, I'd rather be able to slide it under the counter. The alternative would be to just hang the bag, but I thought this might be a little neater if it works. I, at this point, I don't know. We'll give it a day or two and, and see what happens. Then I figure when it's thick enough where I can scoop it out in big pieces, I'll throw it on my bats and then I'll be able to process it. Um, and the thing about doing it on the bats, I found that <coughs> it doesn't it does not introduce any air. Even if you're mixing your clay from dry, from you buy dry clay and make your own mixes, it doesn't introduce any air. You just scrape it off <coughs> and kind of roll it up, and then because I, I don't have a pug mill, and I thought about actually making one, but this seems to be uh, work well for other people, so I'm going to give this a go. And uh, I guess that's about it. If anyone has any information about doing this, please post if you have videos on it or something. If you want to post a video, comment, um, because. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if there's, if there's an easier way of doing this. I'd like to know, and I'd like to share it with everybody else. And I appreciate all your comments. And um, this has been a lot of fun for me. I enjoy doing this. It really helps the ideas, uh, you know, that are in my head to, to come out and uh, become reality. Uh, so thanks a lot. And uh, not doing any pottery tonight, tonight because of my sore finger, but definitely tomorrow. Take it easy.